the journey to earning your degree as an adult can seem daunting. It's a path paved with uncertainty, but every great accomplishment starts with a single step. At Bethel University, we know this path well, so take that first step and let Bethel University be the catalyst that propels you toward a brighter future. Bethel University, where we belong and become. At Bethel University, we have students from here, here, and even here. And our students spend their days not just here, but also here, here, and here too. And who they become at Bethel will change the world for the better. Here, 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 and even here. If you happen to find yourself here or here, you'll find a place where you can belong and become.
50. 50. 50. 50,000. 50,000 stories. Since 1871, Bethel University has prepared over 50,000 graduates to address the world's challenges, no matter the field. And while each of our stories is unique, there's a common thread that ties us together as one. It's this story, the Bethel story, that bonds us together, creates space for our growth, and propels our lives and careers forward. At Bethel, we belong and become. We belong. 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 And become. And become. And become. At Bethel, we belong and become. Empowered by a Christ-guided community, creating lifelong friendships with roommates, classmates, teammates, and bandmates. Transformational academics, led by expert faculty who know us by name and see us as whole people. We help students discover their purpose and pursue their callings to meet the world's needs. Wherever you find a Bethel alumni, you'll find a servant-hearted leader who's helping everyone become more of who God created them to be. At Bethel, we care about you and who you are becoming. We are on this journey together. We hope the Bethel story is a part of your story. Of finding a place to belong and a place to become. Welcome to Bethel University. We are grateful you are here to celebrate with your graduate. As a courtesy to others, please silence or turn off all cell phones. Following the ceremony, you are invited to attend a reception in Brush Arbor Commons, and we encourage you to meet your graduate at the reception. If you are able, we now invite you to please stand for the processional as the graduates, faculty, and administration enter Benson Great Hall. Thank you and enjoy the ceremony.
Good evening. You may be seated. Well, welcome to the Bethel Seminary graduation. My name is Ross Allen, and I'm honored to serve as Bethel University president. Well, this ceremony is especially meaningful. I'm guessing you know, but in case you don't know, we started as a seminary by our founder, John Alexis Edgren, and so it's great to, uh, to have this ceremony to celebrate that, uh, that long tradition. Well, family, friends, and other special guests of our graduating students, we especially welcome you and acknowledge your part in making your students' achievement possible. Students, I hope you can feel the love and support that is in this room. And uh, I'm guessing you agree with me that you wouldn't be here with all of them. So I think we should take a moment and thank them. What do you think? <laughs> I'm going to also ask, uh, for some families, this may represent the first, the student may be, uh, you may be the first in your families uh, to be the first generation to receive an advanced degree. So I want to ask anyone who is first generation advanced degree if you'd be willing to stand up so that we can acknowledge you and your family. Any first generation? There you go. Fantastic. Congratulations. So graduates, I also think it's appropriate that we say thank you to you. Thank you for enriching our community by what you've brought with your experiences, your perspectives, your talents, and your interests, so thank you. Well, for many of you, your time at Bethel was marked by factors beyond your control. There was this little thing called a pandemic that affected some of you, and I realize uh, for some of you that had significant impact, and I appreciate the tenacity and the work that it required to make it through that. Perhaps it required care for family members or you had loss in your family, and I want to acknowledge that. So whatever experiences you had, your challenges to achieve your degree, I'm sure were greater than you ever imagined, but yet you persevered. You may have experienced times when you doubted you could or perhaps you should continue. And I congratulate you and say that tonight is therefore a celebration of your achievement in spite of the challenges. We are proud of you, your achievement we hope has helped build resilience, perseverance, compassion, and determination. Tremendous life skills that will serve you well in the days ahead. Through the Bethel Seminary experience, you have developed meaningful, caring relationships with faculty, staff, and fellow students. Some of those friendships will last a lifetime or perhaps for eternity. You have learned under the counsel and education of incredible faculty, and some of them will be mentors and friends for a lifetime. We often has, ask, how do we assess the achievement of our mission? And as John Alexis Edgren said, our founder, we measure it in the lives and work of our graduates. We are dedicated at Bethel to developing academically excellent and well-rounded servants who will go out into the world that is desperately in need of the love of Jesus Christ. Just as importantly, we desire that each of you know that you are loved loved beyond any comprehension we could have for a God who loves us. Our prayer is that you will use your, impact, your education to impact the world for Christ, to bring the kingdom of God to earth as you lead lives of impact in your families, in your communities, in your churches, and across the world. Congratulations, Bethel Seminary Class of 2024. Will you please rise and join me for the invocation? Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you and we praise you that we can gather here together tonight. We thank you for the work these graduates have done. Completing a seminary degree is challenging enough under normal circumstances, and many of these graduates have done so in the midst of incredible challenge and upheaval. All have made significant sacrifices on the way to this moment. Lord, we know that it's only through your grace and your strength that we can do the things you call us to. And so we thank you for working in the lives of these graduates to bring them to this point. Thank you for giving them strength, wisdom, clarity of thought and word, 
the ability to engage well with fellow students, faculty, clients, and family. Thank you for pre preparing them, not just for this moment, but for the ministries to which you've called them and where they will now serve. Lord, in light of our complete dependence on you, it's only right that we invite your presence here with us tonight. Give us each an awareness of your presence and our need for it, and bless us as we seek to honor you through the celebration of what you've accomplished in and through these graduates. Be pleased to be a part of this celebration, we pray, O oh God. We ask all this in the name of Christ our Lord and Savior, to whom be all glory and honor tonight and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. Fellow graduates, distinguished faculty and staff, families and friends, I'm honored to be speaking this afternoon and to reflect on what has undoubtedly been a massive effort for each of us, one that came at a great cost and yet was discerned as a call by each of us from our great God. To persevere to completion of these degrees was not done alone, but with the help of God, those here today, extended church families, and many other networks of people who have given time, financial resources, emotional support, and other helps. On behalf of all of us, we thank you, and we would not have made it here today without you. When I consider these last five years of seminary, I have deep gratitude towards God, towards the experience of learning with the Bethel community, and Bethel as an academic institution. Bethel Seminary's approach and program combines academic rigor and personal reflection in ways that holistically prepare students for ministry leadership. What I've appreciated most are the practical and grounded ways that our professors have challenged us to integrate what is learned and what is lived, and continually encourage us to bring our whole selves to the seminary experience. Through this approach, Bethel has created a robust platform by which we can come back to as a reference point and also jump off from as we launch further into ministry. As for the Bethel Seminary community, both my peers and professors, it is bittersweet to reflect on the memories of time spent in trustworthy conversation, academic discussions, and a variety of community activities. Things that come to mind are sharing fika, acting out the book of Jonah in the Hebrew language, praying in groups silently for extended periods of time, end of semester celebration dinners, wrestling through uncomfortable topics, concepts, and scripture passages together, navigating and supporting each other through COVID and all the uncertainties and challenges that it brought us as a community and in our churches. As a teaching assistant for three professors and courses, I had the honor to richly learn from my peers and their work and better understand the complexities that they were journeying amidst their studies. Beginning new jobs, losing jobs, juggling ministry demands, juggling family demands, losing loved ones, pregnancies, infertility struggles, weddings, illnesses, financial strain, academic challenges. The fortitude of this, of this community is remarkable. I have a deep respect and appreciation for my fellow graduates and peers throughout my time at Bethel. What we've shared here is special. And as this unique time draws to a close, I pray you know how much you have accomplished and what an impact it has made on those around you to be in community with them. And to our professors, Thank you for sharing your gifts of teaching, leadership, time, and wisdom, and for being trustworthy pastors of pastors. And finally, all thanks and praise be to God who calls, equips, provides, sustains, and refreshes. He is sufficient for our every need. We all came here with our stories, and we leave here with our stories. And no one fully knows these stories but God, the one who has been journeying with us through it all, and in particular through this seminary time that, we have, that we're reflecting on today. He calls us to these experiences and circumstances, giving us what we need along the way, ultimately to glorify him in ministry and in life. And undoubtedly, he will use what we've learned and lived out here at Bethel in specific ways as well. In Joshua chapters 3 and 4, we're told that God made the water of the Jordan River stand in a heap so the Israelites could cross over the riverbed on dry ground as they entered the promised land. God commanded one person from each of the 12 tribes to take a stone from the middle of the river and place it on the riverbank on the other side where they camped after their crossing. The stones were symbolic not only of the remarkable provision that God had made for them to cross over on dry ground, but also served as a reminder of the power of the Almighty God that they might continue to follow him, worship him, 
and respond in obedience as they continued into the promised land. These stones were not only a testimony for them of God's power, but also for generations to come. As we receive our diplomas today and enter into new places of calling, may our memories and these degrees be reminders to each of us and to those we serve, just as the stones on the riverbank were reminders to the Israelites of what God has done to provide for us through our time here to get us to this point in each of our lives and bolster our faith in what he will continue to do from this day forward. Let us not forget that God is faithful. May we be spurred on to love, worship, and revere our almighty God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, while leading others to do the same. And may God bless us as we continue to follow his call, rely on his provision, trust the spirit to lead us, as he has always done, and minister to others in the name and the likeness of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good evening, my name is Jennifer Scott, and today it is my honor to congratulate you on behalf of the Bethel University Alumni Association. We've used the word student to define your role in this university for just a few brief years, but collectively, you'll bear the title Bethel Alumni for a lifetime. Today you join over 50,000 others who have set the Bethel standard by taking what they've learned here and taking it there to every corner of the earth. They use their careers, disciplines, and relationships as platforms to change the world. All of us at Bethel hope that you, like other alumni, will experience your Bethel education to have lasting effects on your friendship, your faith, your calling, your career, and your sense of belonging. So today we say goodbye to you as seminary students, and we say hello to a lifetime of shared ongoing alumni connections. We are welcoming you to the Bethel alumni family. And as with any good and healthy family, we hope to experience ongoing and meaningful connections. We hope you'll stay in touch with us. Let us know where you're serving, keep us updated, and return home when you can. We will in turn strive to be a resource and support system for you and your families and hopefully your churches in the years to come. Our goal is to help you extend the value of your degree by offering networking opportunities, meaningful events with pathways to connect you back to Bethel and its people. So in the coming years, when you identify ways in which you can support a former professor, a fellow classmate, a current student, or the mission of Bethel Seminary, I hope you will. We ask that you take Bethel with you wherever you go. Be an ambassador for this life-changing seminary sharing your Bethel story with others as you're able. This is how Bethel continues to live on and impact future generations. So display, as she mentioned, as Terry mentioned, display that diploma proudly. Uh, today we collectively celebrate what God did through your time at Bethel Seminary, and we boldly send you off to represent Bethel into this great big world that needs people of hope, and that's you. Well done, graduates. Congratulations for myself and your Bethel University Alumni Association. We are rooting for you. And now I ask you to please stand and join us in singing Be Thou My Vision. The lyrics can be found in your program.
My name is uh, Titus Wafula Wanyonyi from Kenya, as you can see my colors. Uh, I remember it like yesterday, my brother Sami Wanyonyi, who had gone through this seminary, was being honored as the alumni of the year. That was the fall of 2017. Having emerged from some anonymous part of Africa, his had been a journey of a kind. He was now a world evangelist with the unquenchable fire in his chest for lost souls, for which cause he was also being honored by his alma mater. I was privileged to represent the Wanyonyi family on that occasion, and at the tail end of it, I was approached by Dr. Janine Brown with a very unlikely and yet the most desirable question for me. Do you want to join Bethel Seminary? Of course, that was the greatest desire of my heart, but for one little challenge, my financial ability. But the fact that I am here today attests to the fact that mine was a needless worry. Not only does the Lord provide, but Bethel Seminary is fairly affordable. Uh, I owe my time in Bethel to my brother Sami Wanyonyi, and more particularly to the spiritual sensitivity and encouragement of, the, of uh, Dr. Janine Brown and Dr. David Clark, to whom I'm most grateful. As is the case with the rest of my colleagues, the academic journey through Bethel has been challenging, enriching, and empowering. Today, we leave Bethel as workmen and the women who are more equipped, more skilled, more confident, and in fact, men and women ready to present ourselves to our God as those who have no need to be ashamed, able to correctly divide the word of truth. This would not have been possible were it not for the tireless and unwavering commitment of our Bethel faculty in shaping us to be the best that we can ever be in our various areas of interest. And so on behalf of my colleagues, I stand in the presence of the Lord and our supportive families and friends to thank you most sincerely, our uh, indefatigable professors, for unreservedly emptying yourselves into us. You have expended yourselves on us. Sorry, you have not expended yourselves on us. You have, in fact, invested yourselves in us. To us, this is not a graduation as for completion uh, ceremony. It is a commissioning and commencement service. And so we leave Bethel Seminary re-energized, refired, and more confident servants of our God, ready to commence our respective journeys in order to fulfill our particular callings with greater skill, greater capacity, and greater commitment to the glory of God and for the good of his church, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, for which he died, resurrected, and forever lives. To our spouses and families, friends, and those who have believed in us along this journey, like in my case, uh, David Walden of Bethel, and the board and staff of Village School of the Bible, uh, as they have done along the way, we say thank you. You sacrificed your time, your resources, your pleasures and conveniences so that we become what God will have us become. In the Kenyan tongue, we will say, Asante Sana. Thank you very much. And now for the very best part, 
of the happiest day of the year at Bethel University. President Allen, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the degree candidates for the Bethel Seminary Class of 2024. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Arts please stand? President Allen, these students have fulfilled the requirements for the degree Master of Arts and have been approved by their programs and the Bethel Seminary faculty. I present them to you for conferral of the degree. Thank you. Inasmuch as you have successfully completed the prescribed course of study and upon recommendation of the faculty and approval of the Bethel University Board of Trustees, I am very pleased to confer upon each of you the degree Master of Arts with all the rights and responsibilities of the degree. Congratulations. You may be seated. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Divinity please stand? President Allen, these students have fulfilled the requirements for the degree Master of Divinity and have been approved by the Bethel Seminary faculty. I present them to you for conferral of the degree. Thank you. Inasmuch as you have successfully completed the prescribed course of study and upon recommendation of the faculty and with the approval of the Bethel University Board of Trustees, I am very pleased to confer upon each of you the degree Masters of Divinity with the rights and responsibilities of the degree. Congratulations. You may be seated. I now invite the master's graduates to come to the platform to receive their diplomas as the marshals direct. Alam Bishu. <laughs> Ashley Aaron Christofferson. John Martin Connerton. Andrew John Dvorak. <laughs> Renee Lynn Gibbons. <laughs> Catherine Esther Magnuson. Lise Farah Uzudinma. James David Hayden. Krista K. Kraus. Jacqueline Soror. Christy J. Skelhas. Jessica Lynn Seeley. Brian Ezekiel King. <laughs> J. 
Jesse Shannon Simpson. Andrew William Bramson. Samantha Kudzanya Kumbula. Taylor Potts. Callie Elizabeth Franz. Taji Hurd. Karen Elise Jensen. Forlar Ogundipi. Philip Russell Bagansky. Alexis Marjorie Everts. Jamie Ann Horn. Christian Ann Larson. Trevor Matthias Limberg. Jessica Canada Puffenbaugh. Jenny Marie Stein. Michelle Young. Zachary Anderson. Christopher Raymond Auer. Joseph Donald Sprow Dunwald. Michael Bradley Farenbrook. Wendy Teresa Green. Jacqueline Rose Hicks. Matthew Hosea Cadlick. Angelo David Lopez. Rose Marie Nellison. Robert Roland Newman. John Patton.
Terry Michelle Russell. Amy Jo Fredman Staley. Michael Ross Wallstrom. Will the candidates for the degree Doctor of Ministry please stand? <laughs> President Allen, these students have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Ministry and have been approved by their programs and the Bethel Seminary faculty. I present them to you for conferral of the degree. Thank you. Candidates, inasmuch as you have successfully completed the prescribed course of study and upon recommendation of your faculty, and with the approval of the Bethel University Board of Trustees, I am very pleased to confer upon each of you Bethel's highest degree, Doctor of Ministry, with all the rights and responsibilities of the degree. Congratulations. I now invite you to come to the stage and receive your diploma as the marshals direct you. And as these new doctors of ministry walk across the stage, I will call their names and also read the titles of their dissertations. So please wait to applaud these scholars until the titles are finished. Karen Jean Beaumont. Developing a leadership model that encourages racial equity in the church. <laughs> Tara P. Bolger. Bridging the gap. Effective strategies to engage emerging adults in the church. Deborah Jacqueline Carter, Diversity and Inclusion in the Historical White Church, The Great Experiment. <laughs> Regina Claudette Jean-Pierre Bryant, Restorative Practices Lead to Turnaround Presbyterian Churches in Nebraska. Galen Cherie Pearl Jones, the role of a leader establishing psychological safety in the church. <laughs> Jerry Kelvin Maynard, Ministry Formation, an African American pastor's perspective on the use of non seminary and secular work training for pastoral leadership. Avalyn Nisisung Nwani, How to Empower Women to Use Their Gifts in Ministry. <laughs> Molly Catherine Schrader, Christian Leadership Development, a Christian Leadership Development Curriculum to increase emotional intelligence using a multifaceted approach. <laughs> T 
Titus Waffler Wanyunyi. Effective practices in the pulpit ministry that mitigate ecclesial adoption of popular culture among converged worldwide churches in Minneapolis and St. Paul. Let's celebrate the Bethel Seminary class of 2024 one more time. I saw a couple of you wiping away tears. It's no joke what you've been able to accomplish. So let it flow. Celebrating your academic achievements with you today is such a joy and delight. It is also fitting that we shift our attention now to the one who called you to Bethel Seminary and who walked with you and cheered you on through your education and brought you here to this point. Communion is often called the Eucharist which in Greek means thanksgiving. In partaking together of the bread and the cup, we offer our thanksgiving to our Savior for the salvation he accomplished by his sacrifice on the cross, as well as the abundance of blessings that flow from that. I am confident that each of you graduates would acknowledge that you would not be here celebrating tonight if it weren't for the countless manifestations of grace and blessing God has poured out on you. As we celebrate your tremendous work and accomplishments, it is only right that we include a time of giving thanks to God for what he has done. And in a moment, we're gonna express that, express our thanks to and celebrate our great God and savior through having communion. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 25, it says, The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the, the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Graduates and faculty, please take the communion elements now. As you partake, reflect on all the ways God has strengthened you and how God has helped you through and offer God thanks for what Christ has done through his life and death and resurrection on the cross. Dr. Janine Brown will now continue our celebration with a reflection. I'll let you finish up. Well, it's my distinct pleasure to share with you this afternoon a few reflections from Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. These verses read, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The metaphor of the Christian life as a race captivates me. This in spite of me not being a runner, something I tried for one summer but soon abandoned. My husband and I chose this passage from Hebrews as key verses for our wedding and then for our marriage. 
We did so because we were drawn to the image of running a race and because this particular race has Jesus as its focus. For this reason, the passage seemed to me to be particularly relevant for you who are graduating as you think back on your journey through seminary and the course that now stretches out ahead of you. The first image offered by the author of Hebrews is the crowd attending the race. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us run the race. Faith for the author of Hebrews is not something done in isolation, apart from others. We run together. Let us run. And we are surrounded by witnesses, those who testify by their lives that this race of faith is worth the effort. These witnesses point us back to Hebrews 11, the chapter before, which catalogs many faithful members of Israel whom we read about in the Old Testament, emphasizing the enduring faith of each of them. Abel, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Moses, and Rahab, to name just a few. These Old Testament believers trusted in the reality of God's kingdom, or as the author says in chapter 11, a better country, a city that God was preparing for them. And we might also imagine our own extended cloud of witnesses, those more recent additions to the crowd. For instance, I imagine my father, who died a few years ago during COVID, of COVID, as part of my cloud of witnesses, those that inspire me to run the race of faith by their example. And there are many witnesses here today to celebrate you, amen? Our graduates, uh, at the end of the seminary relay you've been running, we are not alone in this race of faith. The second image the author of Hebrews employs is that of the divesting that needs to happen before a race. Whatever is too heavy to carry needs to be dropped. He writes, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. A race requires streamlining. The writer mentions sin pictured here as a burdensome weight and also mentions anything that could weigh us down. When you run a race, you strip down to the essentials to reach the goal faster. Even things that might otherwise be good can be just extra weight in a race. Graduates, as you move from seminary into various areas of service, in ministry, in therapy, in other kinds of leadership, there may be a tendency to, to say yes to all sorts of good things. After all, the classes, papers, tests that have taken so much time and energy are done, right? In this new moment, I invite you to keep in mind the race ahead. What will contribute to the faithful running of the race for you and for those you serve? What good things might you discern that God is not calling you to so that you can run the race? In verse 2, the author articulates the centerpiece of his running metaphor. He shows how Jesus is at the heart of the race of faith. And we see Jesus at both the starting line and the finishing line. He is the pioneer of faith and the perfected, per perfecter of it. He is the source and the goal. And like the exemplars from Hebrews 11, he is a model of what running the race well looks like. Yet he is the example par excellence. He is the perfect example. Jesus has finished this race so we can be assured he knows how to get us to the finish line. Well, graduate seminary has been something of a race. And the seminary race, like the race of faith, has not been a quick sprint, I imagine. As Craig Kester writes about Hebrews 12, this contest has more to do with endurance than with speed. I love the phrase from Eugene Peterson, a long obedience in the same direction. Perseverance is what we are called to, not a 50-yard dash, something more like a marathon, which, though I've not done, my daughter has recently done a marathon. I'm quite impressed. But the race ends with Jesus in our sights. We see him at the end of the race. And we also see in the distance Joy, according to the author. And this is my final observation. 
Jesus ran the race with a vision of joy that fueled his strides. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Now in the presence of God, Jesus fully experiences that divine joy. And to be honest, I don't often contemplate joy as a theological quality, something God is defined by. Yet this passage tells us that Jesus, who reveals God to us, is characterized by joy. And the theme of joy seems particularly fitting for this special day. It's a day of joy, is it not? Do I have an amen? Yes. Even Bob Baptist can say amen. <laughs> we have a joy set before us if we follow Jesus in the race of faith. And we also have, as Michael Card sings it, a joy in the journey. One of the questions that get, gets asked around the dinner table with our young grandchildren, Harrison and Daisy, is what are you looking forward to? As Christians, we have the gift of answering Jesus and joy. The joy of our God that will be extravagantly shared with us at the journey's end. This is a day of joy as we mark a segment of the race you graduates have completed. We rejoice with you. Your family and friends, your Bethel faculty and staff, we all rejoice with you. And Jesus cheers you onward as you continue the race of faith that he pioneered and perfected. I'd like to conclude with a lyric I wrote early in my marriage on this passage from Hebrews. I'm not going to sing it. Just so you know. May give you hope and joy on this special day. Trembling limbs as the race begins, I wonder if I'll finish the course I've begun. Looking in, I see all my sin, and it drags me down, keeps me from moving ahead. But far, far in the distance, I see him. He's there holding out his hand. He's the one who started this race before me, and he's promised to see me to the end. So take courage, my soul. There are many who have gone before, and the author and finisher of faith cheers you on. Jesus cheers you on. Far, far in the distance I see him. He's there holding out his hand. He's the one who started this race before us. And he's promised to see us to the end. Amen. To the 2024 graduates of the Doctor of Ministry program, congratulations. And as you go out from here into your respective areas of ministry, equipped with the highest degree that we offer here at Bethel Seminary, I offer the following benediction from the third chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. According to the riches of his glory, may he grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And may God bless his word to each of you. I serve as the professor and program director for the Master of Arts in Children's Youth and Family Ministry. And so my blessing today is targeted to those students. But let me just say, this task is too big for us to do alone. We need all of our graduates. and really everyone in this room to rise to the task of passing on the faith to the next generation. We need the best and the brightest to share faith with our children and our youth. We need our best theologians because children will believe whatever you tell them. That's kind of scary. And young people will have seeds of faith and understanding planted in their lives in those adolescent years that they may find much later were not completely correct. 
So we need our best and brightest theologians sharing our faith with our children and our youth. We need our best and brightest Bible scholars because as we share the stories of scripture with children and as we enable and empower youth to dig into the scripture, they will fall in love with Jesus through the words of the scripture. That's our hope and our prayer. And we need the best and the brightest leaders who will empower and equip volunteers as well as staff members to share faith with children and youth so that they will not only be the church of tomorrow, but will indeed be a vibrant part of the church of today. So I want to share with you now a prayer from the text Children Matter, which is a text that our students read in their very first introductory class. Um, it is for all of us. Now to our loving and holy God, to the Lord Jesus, our Good Shepherd, and to the indwelling Holy Spirit, we pray for each person who ministers to children and youth. And I hope that's all of us in this room. May they have eyes to see your glory, ears to hear your voice, a mouth to speak your truth, hands to do your work, a heart to share your love, knees to bow before you, and feet to follow you all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Congratulations, MFT graduates. Uh, you have uh, made a step today, and, and I call you a professional colleague. I have a couple of reminders for you, one from Proverbs 16.9. We plan the way we want to live, but the Lord determines our steps, making us able to live it. And the other from Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I pray that these verses provide reassurance to each of you as you embark into the field of marriage and family therapy. A reminder that God is with you. God was with you before you entered the program, while you were in the program, and now as you move forward. May you trust in the Lord to direct your steps, leading you to opportunities where you can make a difference in the lives of others and glorify him with what you do. I also offer you the fourfold Benedictine blessing, whose words are so apropos to the work you are called as marriage and family therapists and the tremendous privilege and responsibility you have of sitting with people in the midst of their suffering. <clears throat> May God bless you with discontent, with easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you will live from deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, abuse, and exploitation of people so that you will work for justice, equality, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, isolation, and violence, so that you will reach out to comfort them and change their pain to joy. May God bless you with the foolishness to think you can make a difference in this world, so that you will do the things which others tell you cannot be done. These blessings are yours, not for the asking, but for the giving. From the one who wants to be your companion, our God who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Masters of Divinity students, congratulations on this monumental accomplishment of completing your degree. While some people, when they hear Master of Divinity, they think you spent years studying voodoo and witchcraft. <laughs> but I hope that in all seasons, you'll be ready to share Christ. That you can share one thing that you learned when people think you've studied voodoo. <laughs> and you've done a monumental task of finishing this robust program, studying the Bible, theology, and history. But I know the scripture warns that knowledge puffs up. But I hope that you will boast in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I would like to bless you or pray for you, 
hoping that, using the word of the psalmist, that may the word of God be a light unto your path. And may you continually seek the Lord, the living water. At this point, I'd like to invite everyone to join us in the reception following this graduation service at the Brush Albert Commons. And Koheleth, that is the teacher in the book of Ecclesiastes states that there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. This is certainly a joyous occasion to laugh and dance. Please stand and join me as I offer my benediction to our new graduates, based on Kohelet's words. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. Dear graduates, may you find great happiness as you abide in our good God. That each person may find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, when times of weeping and mourning come, for we know that it will, may you nevertheless find satisfaction in your work and remember that your work is a gift from God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will fear that is to worship and revere him. May you fight the good fight, run the good race, and keep the faith. I welcome you as co-workers to the work of building God's kingdom and joining in the everlasting worship of the Almighty. Amen.